Welcome to a brand new episode of Ghoulish with me, Max Booth, a host. Today on this glorious, glorious podcast, I am talking to Haley Pipel, author of the new novella, The Room and His Kings. Uh, what are we talking about? Well, guess what? It's in the uh, podcast episode title, which you would know if you had read it. But it's okay. I'll tell you anyway. Today, on Ghoulish, with me, Max Booth, a host, I am talking with Haley Pipel about... Cosmic Hull. What is that? You're just gonna have to wait and uh, find out because that's what we uh, that's what we're gonna get into on the episode itself. That's why I had the conversation with Haley so we could talk about Cosmic Hull. So calm down. Don't go googling what what until nation is Cosmic Hull because guess what? We're going to tell you. We're going to get all into it on this episode of Ghoulish with me, Max Booth, a host. (laughs) Oh my god. I think to begin with, for anyone listening, how would you... Describe Cosmic Hill to someone who didn't know what it was. Oh, uh, let's see. I suppose the easiest way would just be to say that it um it has to do with horror of the indescribable on some level. Um, the cosmic element definitely coming into play as far as like interdimensional stuff, um, things from space that aren't necessarily like little green men or anything like that, anything traditional of that nature. Um, just, to, just, I would explain it just in the approach of, of like, um, where the horror might come from, where the creatures or monsters or horrible concepts might come from are from angles that make you feel small. Yeah. I've never tried myself to explain it to anybody. It's always, it's just seemed as a, th- as a knowable thing in my head, but when I try now to explain it at least to myself i don't quite know what the definition is but what you said makes a lot of sense i guess it's something that makes the universe seem infinite in a way in a way human beings will never quite know yeah i mean i think some people will kind of minimize it down to like you know tentacles in the sky but there's so much more to it and um but but if i I don't know if i would try to like my family doesn't read that kind of that kind of stuff usually so i'm like if i'm trying to explain it to them it's just like um there's big scary things is probably where i'd go <laughs> with that so it's it's hard it depends on the person really i think like how how much uh how much experience do they have with the genre yeah i suppose explaining it in depth to someone who doesn't read or watch anything of this genre would a uh, result badly they might uh, yeah, just turn around think, and walk away you kind of have to just throw them in the deep end and see how they feel about it afterward <laughs> it's like okay you know how uh human beings mean nothing in the grand scheme of things that's what we'll do in here <laughs> with cosmic <laughs> explaining that to a child yeah exactly <laughs> Have you uh, been a fan of this genre for long? And uh, what was your introduction to it? Um, probably, probably an unexpected place. Um, Stephen King's It, I think, was the first my first brush with Cosmic Horror. Which, you know, people who don't read it, um, you know, if only watched the movies, might not know it's Cosmic Horror. But it's just like the last like two hundred pages is unmistakably Cosmic Horror. Yeah, um, definitely. And then later, I did. Let's see. My wife had gotten me an anthology of cosmic horror stuff, and that kind of was a nice introduction to, um, like, Ramsey Campbell and Caitlin Kiernan and um, a bunch of others. And um, I did 
read some Lovecraft, wasn't crazy about it. Um, moved on to other others, um, you know, more Caitlin Kiernan, Brian Hodge, Laird Barron. You know, there's just a bunch of people doing amazing cosmic horror these days. Yeah, I love uh, Caitlin's book a lot. I've tried Lovecraft in the past, and I just, I can't get through his prose. It's just not the type of writing I want to no. read. It's so, it's so billing. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I don't try, I try not to say that on social media because I don't want to get people after me, but I'm just like, yeah, I don't looking at, I'll, I'll look at it and I'm just like, I don't, I don't, it's not for me is the <laughs> nice way to put it. Yeah, absolutely the same. I just, I've tried multiple times and I can't do it. And frankly, I, I don't know how anyone can. <laughs> it's like reading a guide to how to build like a some type of machine almost it's i don't know i guess we can spend the whole <laughs> uh, episode talking trash about lovecraft but there's probably other <laughs> things we could talk about too yeah <laughs> when did the initial idea of this novella the realm and his kings uh, hit you um let's see it was probably probably been over two years ago um, I got some ideas about the lore and um, just the, the backstory of what the worm is and, you know, you know, Earth's Earth's history involving the worm. Um, and it kind of just slowly grew from there. I wasn't even I had notes down about like all kinds of different things because I wasn't sure. OK, I was like, I have this cosmic story how do I approach that with people, like with humans? And so I tried a bunch of different approaches, like in notes, like I had stuff where there was a town and then it gravitated to New York city. And it's about missing professor who that character is still kind of in the book a little bit, um, or at least mentioned here and there. But, um, it, I think it was late last year that, um, this version finally started to gestate. I was writing a short story and um, kind of got some better ideas about what kind of character I needed to approach this with. And, and Monique came up and that was really when the story came alive. Yeah. So for someone who hasn't read this yet and is interested, how would you uh, pitch it to them? It's 1990, New York City. Um, Monique is living homeless and her girlfriend Donna has gone missing. She's been missing for three months. She's been looking, Monique has been looking everywhere for her. And recently she's heard rumors about uh, an abductor has been taking women off the street one each night. Here's that lately that person or thing has been taking women from freedom tunnel and decide she, you know, Monique had at one time been staying in freedom tunnel and she decides to go back there and see if she can find out what's taking these women um, and she follows, She once she finds out what it is, she f starts following it, hoping that it can lead her to Donna. And it goes into, she finds this whole underworld to New York City of cults and monsters and the history of the world. I am in love with the, the mythos you've set up in this book. Is this the first <laughs> time that, we've, that you've written about it? I, I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with the other books you have out, so forgive me. Oh no, they have the books. The books I have out right now have nothing to do with each other. So anyone can pick up any book and read whatever they want. Um, I haven't written this mythos before, aside from those notes or attempts at starting it in the past. But no, this is the first. Uh, this is the first that it's appeared in publication. I, it's honestly only the second cosmic horror thing that I've had published. There was a flash fiction earlier this year, but that's about it. And it had no, that flash fiction had nothing to do with this. How do you like writing a cosmic role compared to uh, anything else? It's it's much more of a challenge. Um, this this was my longest project so far. That's that's been you know in publication or is going to be published. It took me five months, I think, because like this was so outside my wheelhouse. Cosmic horror is at least for me is hard. It's it's um. And I'm sure it's something that gets a little easier as you have practice with it. But just this particular book, it, it beat me up. It challenged me. It it um, 
I, I had to work for this one harder than anything else I've written. Can you get uh, into some of the, sp- the specifics of how it was challenging? Yeah, even once I had Monique as a character and understood how she was going to approach this, what you know, her outlook is is very important to how the mythos is is approached because she finds it in layers. But even then, like like previous drafts had her just kind of like there were tunnels and stuff, and it was just it I I had to like I I had I haven't talked about this before, so I guess we'll talk about it now. The um now that the book's been out for almost a month. Um I had given a draft to my wife to read and she um she got about partway through and she was like, okay, so this is where it gets good. And I was just like, okay, I need to I need to go back to the drawing yeah. board here. <laughs> um but yeah, it just um getting the ideas across in a way that was that made sense. Like I didn't want to be spoon feeding, but at the same time you do need to guide things a little bit. And since Monique had no understanding of this and ultimately didn't care about the lore aside from once it starts affecting her, um, you know, it was, it was about presenting those ideas in an under, in an understandable way. It was about, you know, making sure the characters were engaging once, once Corrine and, and lady came into the drafting process, a lot of that stuff became much easier because they were people who knew what they were talking about. And that gave Monique a little bit or a little better guidance. And that gave me a little better guidance. And I was like, okay, so if you get this, then you can get that. And then just like one thing leads to another. And it, it got a little, it, it got easier as it went on, but it was just, it was a big challenge at the beginning, just because it was like, how do I even start with this? This is something that goes back like millions of years. Yeah, I think you landed on a really small idea of having the objective be something almost almost unrelated that later becomes related with Monique trying to find Donna and not really <laughs> giving too much a shit about all this crazy cosmic <laughs> mythos being uh, shouted at. Well, she's like, yeah, okay, but I have little things on my mind. Thanks. <laughs> uh, do you have intentions of expanding on this mythos and as well, uh, fiction like a lot of folks and especially in the cosmical genre they tend to have all these short stories and books that can be read as standalones but they all take place in the same universe and i i see this novella and i read it and i think this has the opportunity to be expanded and do something like fans would uh, be quite uh, obsessed with um, at the time of finishing it, I did not have any plans on that, but um, I had multiple people approach me and my answer to them had been, no, I'm not really planning on that. But on to be honest, ideas have been coming up and I'm just like, well, there's this story I could tell or this thing. And um, so I, I have a preference to kind of jump subgenres. Um, like each of my books has been a different horror subgenre. I want to keep doing that, but um, I'm writing so much stuff right now that I do think there's room to kind of work in more of a, more glimpses of this cosmic universe. So it's a possibility. I don't want to say yes, because I don't like like confirming stuff that ha- doesn't even exist yet. Um, but it's definitely something that's on my mind now. Yeah, that's cool. I, uh, I look forward to potential... Mutual <laughs> expansions. <laughs> Do you think uh, really deeply about the whole nature of cosmic cool? Like, does something like that uh, spook you at all? I do think about it, but it doesn't spook me. I mean, our world has been here for billions of years. Um, life has been on this world for over 500 million years. And, like, I know that. For some people, that makes them feel unimportant. But I was like, no, we're we're still part of all of this. Um, it's just, you know, my spiritual outlook is just that, you know, we're part of this world, and this world was here before, and it'll be here after, and we we keep going. And um, it doesn't disturb me, honestly. Like the 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 level of unimportance or smallness, I should say, is just like, well, everything's small if you zoom out far enough. I find it kind of comforting too, because. I think I uh, get a bit panicked 
when I have responsibility and to know <laughs> that like, oh, I'm not important at all. I can, I don't have to do anything. That's uh, soothing in a strange way. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, I think it's, it's good to lean back and be like, you know, you, it, it's okay for a person to just spend their life finding out interesting things. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know why this memory flashed in my head, but like, going to a movie theater back back when they existed and like someone saying hey can you watch the seat for me that's way too much responsibility yeah i don't like that either <laughs> I, I don't like like what if someone else wants to take that seat then then you have to like oh no i'm i'm holding the seat for somebody i don't know it becomes a whole thing and right it's soothing to remind yourself that it's all it's all small stuff it's all gonna be okay I don't know what I'm talking about. How did oh, you? No, I understand. I, understand. I, I was at a restaurant once and a woman came up and said, can you, can you take my baby? And I was like, no, I'm Whoa. not doing that. Take, yeah. like, to keep? No, I think she just wanted, but I was just like, I can't, I can't, I yeah. can't do that. And then they, they think it's rude then when the, you reject them. Like, you, you brought this, uh awful to me i shouldn't have to say yes i don't know <laughs> how did you uh get connected with off limits press um well i submitted to the open call earlier this year but um before that i i had worked with sam samantha kolyesnik before when she um edited the worst laid plans uh vacation horror anthology for grindhouse press um so I knew we worked well together. I knew I could trust her with stuff. And that was kind of a big, kind of a big thing because there was a um, novel I had to pull from a publisher earlier this year because of issues with that publisher, which, um, yeah, I don't want to get into that too deeply, but, um, but yeah, so I was just like, okay, Sam's, Sam's good. Um, I will submit this. And then we, um, yeah, we just, once, once she was interested, we started talking and, and the project was underway. Uh, Off Limits is a pretty uh, new press, right? They, is this the second book they've put out? Yes. The first was Crossroads by Laurel Hightower in uh, August, I believe. I see uh, really good things for this press's future. Uh, I've read both novellas now. Well, I'm almost done with the second novella, I should say. And they were both just outstanding. It's been it's been a nice experience. Um, Sam, Sam is fantastic, and it's been... It's been a very rewarding experience to work with Off Limits. How can folks find you online? I'm at, uh, my website is www.haleypiper.com. I'm on Twitter at Haley Piper Says, and I'm Instagram at Haley Piper Fights. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can't say enough good things about this novella. I hope many people buy it. They will, I will put a link to the book and the show notes do you have anything else you would like to uh, promote um sure i've got um some short stories coming out next year keep an eye out for those um my first short story collection is coming out in spring from the seventh terrace it's called unfortunate elements of my anatomy and then my first novel will be released from uh, rooster republic and strange house books um sometime in the summer in hardcover and then in November 2021, in paperback, um, a body horror novel, Queen of Teeth. Well, that sounds great. <laughs> I, I want to read that right now. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Haley. This was fun. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Ghoulish. If you like what you just listened to, hey, go review us on iTunes. And go buy the books we publish at perpetualpublishing.com. And hey, why not also go support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash publishing. And uh, whatever. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to end this right now. Goodbye.
Little Spooky, die Spooky. Ha <laughs> ha!